Okay, happy Tuesday and welcome back everyone to our Tuesday morning market outlook session. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play and we have an action packed morning here for you because markets are about to break out higher from a major resistance level that we've been talking about for what feels like uh, over a month now. So it's important for us to analyze that breakout and take a look at the health of the market rally. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I do, just a quick disclaimer, what we're gonna discuss here today is purely for demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. Now, for those of you that traded first trade, the new iOS platform is a fantastic platform for trading options, especially for those of you that trade complex options. The ability to enter orders very easily from your mobile phone, manage, managing those complex orders and editing your orders in the click of a single button is been, uh, has been fantastic. So I highly recommend that you take a look at the new iOS platform, especially for those of you that trade complex options. Now. We're gonna go through a few things today, but predominantly what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a lot of market coverage. We're gonna talk about all different kinds of, kinds of markets, where we see performance, where there are leaders, where there are laggers, talk about how that's healthy for the current market rally. Then we're gonna dive into a lot of statistics regarding COVID, between earnings, uh, you know, what we've seen in terms of earnings season so far, we've had about 20% of the S&P 500 report earnings already. So we wanna take a look at what those numbers look like so far, what they're gonna tell us going forward, how we can utilize that data to inform our decisions with respect to trading options. And then we'll take a look at some of the ideas that we currently have here on the tape. So the question that I wanna help investors answer on this particular session is really, you know, can technology and the optimism that we've seen as far as the vaccine trials and the data that's been coming out of uh, quite a few different companies and how their trials have been, have been uh, responding to the vaccine, can that continue to lead the market higher? Because that is exactly what we're currently seeing. And the question is how far can that go and how long can this go on for? Now, my name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. Let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we're gonna talk about the S&P 500. Now, we've been talking about this level 323 for a long time. It's been over a month now. Now we finally got the breakout here yesterday, led by technology, communications, and consumer discretionary, leading the S&P 500 higher. Today, we're about to open another two points higher from where we closed yesterday, two and a half points higher from uh, yesterday's close. So that puts us back into that 339 as our target to the upside here for the S&P 500. There's some minor resistance here at 332 or so, which is a gap that has to get filled. Um, but aside from that, we're basically off to the races up to 339. And we want to analyze this rally and, and talk a little bit about the health of this rally because what you have seen here is a rally uh, or a new high that has not been confirmed by momentum on the daily chart. The weekly chart is looking okay. Uh, money flow is starting to turn positive. Money flow fairly positive here on the daily chart. So everything so far looking pretty good, but a little bit of negative divergence on that move higher. So we want to take a look at the underlying stocks of the S&P 500 to get a sense for the health of this rally. We look at the NASDAQ 100 index represented by the Qs. We have a very nice bounce off that 20-day moving average. This is something that we've talked about consistently since the rally, the beginning of this rally is every single time it touches that 20-day moving average, that's been a good opportunity for a long. That's exactly what we got yesterday here, fueled again by biotech and technology moving this uh, needle higher. We still uh, continue to have some of this negative divergence on the weekly chart. The, the daily chart also, as the market continues to push higher, uh, momentum is no longer confirming those moves, but money flow on the weekly and daily chart remaining relatively strong. So the, the thing about uh, being overbought and being um, having negative divergence is that that can continue to go on for quite some time. So that in itself doesn't mean a whole lot as far as going out and shorting. It's just something to be concerned about, but it is generally speaking, not necessarily a good reason to go out and short it. Emerging markets has 
come back to life over the last few weeks. We've talked about this breakout here a few weeks ago, but it now broke above this 200 week moving average. We had the final breakout here above that 41 and a half level. It's consolidated for quite some time and it's now ready to continue moving higher up into that $46 level. You have both daily and weekly money flow starting to turn positive. Momentum is confirming these moves higher. So emerging markets looking pretty strong here uh, for the markets. IWM, the small caps. Small caps, for the most part, hasn't participated much in the rally over the past few weeks, but is leading the market today. So small caps up about 1.5%, 1.2% early pre-market, actually leading the S&P and, and the, um, the NASDAQ higher here. So this is really healthy, again, to have small caps lead the markets after such a strong day yesterday. You don't want to see strong days like this yesterday where small caps gets left, gets left behind. That's what we saw a lot during the uh, November to January uh, rally where markets continue to rally. Small caps did not participate. That usually tells us that it's a bit of a house of cards that's about to fail, but that's not what we're seeing right now um, as far as small caps go. Equal weight equal weight is still lagging. So this is one of the concerns that we do have about this market rally or the health of the market rally is that leadership is continuing to narrow, that we are seeing few sectors continue to dominate the headlines that are continuing to drag the markets higher. We want to talk a little bit about that next, um, but this is something to definitely be, be um, aware of and understand what that actually means for uh, the market's health at the moment. Now, treasuries have stalled yesterday. Uh, we, have not, we did not see treasuries move any higher. We did not see yields move any lower. But so far, treasuries is still fairly constructive. As you can see, the weekly chart is very strong. Daily chart is fairly range bound, but as you can see, moves higher has been confirmed both on momentum and money flow. Money flow on the weekly chart remains strong, somewhat neutral on the weekly chart in terms of momentum, but starting to reverse higher again. So we could see this breakout here into this 168 level and higher into that 172 and potentially higher if yields continue to move lower. And that is our base case as far as fixed incomes and, and as far as treasuries go. But we want to take a look at where in the fixed income market do we see better opportunities than in the treasury markets. We'll, we'll look at that as some of our ideas. Now, gold Gold continues to rally. Gold continues its strong rally, and we want to talk a little bit about gold and silver here in a, in a few minutes. But gold in a very consistent uptrend, both on a daily and weekly chart. Momentum, for the most part, confirming these moves higher. Money flow remaining strong. This is one of our top uh, trades still for the moment that we believe that gold is still going to continue to rally. Uh, gold still has that $1,900 high from 2011 to contend with. That is the level that we're currently shooting for is that 1900 level here on gold. That's our first target. We're not too far off from that target. We're only probably another 50 bucks, 60 bucks an ounce from that target. So we are fairly close to that, but we do think silver is on a potentially much bigger bigger bull run here for the markets. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that yesterday, the dollar index broke below a fairly major support level here around 96. And as you can see, 96 goes back quite some time here on the dollar index, all the way back to 2018. Um, so 96 has been a pretty strong support level here, but it looks like it's just being broken here to the downside. Now, there is a bit of negative divergence here, right? So we haven't confirmed that move to the downside here on, on, on the weekly chart or the daily chart. Momentum has been fairly flat despite this breakdown. But this is one to pay attention to, especially for those of you that trade currencies. This could be the potential of a much bigger move to the downside here for the dollar. So if you trade Euro dollar, Canadian dollars, for those of you that are, uh, I know a lot of you, a lot of Canadians here are, are watching this. So be careful about this. This is something to keep an eye out for as the dollar index continues to weaken what, what that brings us for the currency markets. Now, with that dollar weakness, what we're starting to see is some is some significant gains in terms of commodities that are price in dollars. We've been talking about this forty-one dollar level again. What I feel a bit like a broken record talking about this forty-one dollar level. Um, and we were talking about how we were waiting for a breakout in one direction or another. And at the time, we were saying that 
as oil continues to move higher, momentum was not confirming those moves higher, actually was moving lower. Um, and But over the past few weeks, as we saw, money flow started to get pretty strong here. Um, that 20 day moving average provided support and it looks like we're just getting a breakout to the upside here on crude. So crude trading at $42, breaking out above that $41 level. So we're finally getting that breakout and we're looking or looking at that $50 target here to the upside. This is part of why energy is the one of the strongest sectors here this morning. We're going to talk about that here as well, but definitely we've been, we've been looking for the breakout here as to which direction it's going to break out. It's breaking out to the upside, so we're looking at some energy names as some opportunities right now. VIX, uh, VIX we talked about here also last week where we talked about the the potential break below the 200 day moving average if at the S&P 500 can break above that 323 level. The fact that now we have that breakout here on the S&P 500 and what we did see is that coincide with the VIX breaking below the 200 day moving average. This puts now further downside pressure here on the VIX. But I did want to show you some research that may lead us to believe that VIX might actually start reversing higher here, especially as we head into an election year. Um, what, what we generally see is that during election years, the VIX has a pretty steady climb from July to November. This is the average VIX level of an election year going from July to November, July being the, er, the lowest of the year, and then uh, November notching up roughly about 4% higher here on the VIX on average. So this is the type of uncertainty that the markets have generally naturally leading up to an election, especially an election year like this, where there is at this point a lot of uncertainty as to not just who the president is going to be in, 2020, uh, in 2021, but also whether the Democrats or the Republicans are going to control the House. So there is a lot of uncertainty, and that is why part of why we think that the VIX is likely going to reverse some of these declines. Um, and as you're thinking about option strategies, which one's best strategy, which, what, what is the best strategy, usually when we see this type of decline, that is when we start taking a look at um, – uh, continuing to sell option strategies, but as VIX declines, uh, option selling strategies become less and less attractive. So being that the VIX is roughly double where we were back in January and February, but still a relative uh, low compared to where we were, it is, starting, it is starting to look like it might be time to start looking for buying opportunities in terms of options, buying calls, buying puts, buying uh, spreads, those types of strategies, debit spreads, shifting away a little bit more from credit spreads into more buying debit spreads because as volatility becomes cheaper and as we expect volatility to start to pick up a little, those are the types of strategies that we want to start shifting our option strategies for going forward the next few weeks as we, uh, next few months as we approach that election in November. So that is one thing I wanted to point you to. Now, to talk about what's been leading the market, what's been lagging behind, that is very important because it's, it, it's, the, it's the health of the market that is determined by the sector rotation. So when you have one sector dragging the whole market or a few names dragging the whole market higher, and what looks like a nice market rally is really an unsustainable rally in the long run. Um, and that's, that's predominantly what we saw from November to February, right before the COVID-19 sell-off, where it's just predominantly technical technology and a few discretionary names dragging the market higher. Everything else was either flat or starting to actually weaken. Um, and, and that led to a very spe a, a ugly sell-off, if you will. So what we've, what we've seen so far is that yesterday's move, yesterday's breakout above that 323 level on the S&P was, was basically three sectors dragging the whole market higher. All the other sectors were actually in the red. You had communications technology and um, discretionary, moving the markets higher. So I, don't, I did want to point out these three sectors uh, separately. So if we look at communications, now fundamentally it makes sense for communications to rally during COVID-19 and especially the rebound because we do expect a shift in how people work, <clears throat> how people consume content. Uh, communications is certainly going to be a net beneficiary of that. So communications recently broke out above this 132, 133 resistance level. Now, this breakout currently, as you can 
C has not been confirmed by momentum. You've got a higher high, but momentum did not make a higher high. You see this both on the daily and weekly chart. So this is slightly concerning, or what we would say caution. We're, we're warning you in terms of caution to get long or chase these. My preference is to always, for these types of setups, to wait for a pullback and then look for a long opportunity. You don't wanna chase these because when you chase these, you have a higher probability of that pullback because of the negative divergence we're currently seeing on both the daily and weekly chart. And we're seeing the same thing on technology. Technology moves higher here in the weekly chart, has not been confirmed by momentum. Uh, we talked about this before in the queues. We see the same thing in XLK. Momentum here, I'm sorry, money flow looking okay for the daily chart, looking okay for the weekly chart, not particularly strong, but at least they're positive. So this is really where we are concerned, again, of, of somewhat short, violent pullbacks. As you can see, technology is full of them. They usually last only two to three trading sessions, but they tend to be, you know, in the three, four percent. You know, if you're long options, that pullback can certainly hurt your position. So that's why it's much better to wait for pullbacks into the, um, whoops, let's see, communications. Oh, sorry, this is discretionary um, and that's technology. So, but technology, same thing, and also discretionary. We're seeing the same moves here in discretionary. Discretionary broke out above that 132 level. Um, as it continues to move higher, both the daily and weekly chart has not confirmed that. But again, momentum is still strong here. So again, positioning here, it's really just short term. It's you, These are true breakouts here on these types of sectors. These are sectors that are likely going to continue to outperform, but be careful when you're positioning for them. Don't continue to chase these higher, wait for pullbacks, then look for that opportunity higher. Now, what I did want to show you are two of the lagging sectors. And again, this speaks to the health of the market rally. So you have energy and financials, two of the weakest sectors in the market, actually leading the market higher here this morning pre-market. That is good to see, especially after you see a strong day like yesterday out of communications, discretionary, and technology. It's good to see those sectors take a pause and then see sectors that are weak like energy and financials start to catch up. Because if you don't see that, if you continue to see energy and financials lag behind and you have these three strong sectors continue to dominate the headlines and continue to move higher, that is when you start creating these types of bubbles, if you will. And I don't think bubble is the right term for this, but you start to create this concentration that is not healthy for the market rally. But energy, one of the strongest sectors this morning, energy is up, um, let's see, 1.66% this morning, financials up 1% this morning, while most of the other sectors are basically flat. So it's actually energy and financials leading the market higher here today. We talked about crude making that move to higher here, breaking out higher. That could be a catalyst for energy to continue moving higher here and breaking out of this recent slump that we've seen over the past few weeks. And also financials. Financials still looking particularly okay above that 23, 23 and a half level here that has been a bit of support or resistance. It's played around with this level for quite some time. Find, finally finding support, getting it back above it. And this could be potentially the catalyst it needs to get back above high, higher here. Now, financials still looking fairly weak below the 20 week moving average, still below the 200 week moving average. So on the weekly chart, not looking particularly strong but the daily chart trying to find some support and starting to move higher so that's what we currently see as far as the broader market the sectors and I did want to show you guys some COVID trends. So one of the things that we have been looking at in terms of the headlines is this steep line that shows a very strong growth in terms of number of cases. Now, we do believe based on research that despite this record number of cases, that is mostly due to testing. That is less so because there's actually a huge spike in terms of cases, meaning the actual true number of cases when we had um, you know, two, 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 a little over 2,000 deaths a day was actually significantly higher. Right now we're hovering at about the 750 level in terms of number of deaths compared to back in April when we were looking at over 2,000 deaths a day. So our models still show that despite the headlines showing substantially higher number of cases, that's mostly due to testing uh, or a significant increase in testing, that that is not currently leading to a significant number of deaths. And one of the things that we also had research on was really 
back in April, uh, the, the correlation in terms of deaths to the number of cases was very strong about seven days later, meaning whenever we had a positive case, that led to a very strong correlation to deaths seven days later. As you can see here, as over the past few weeks, that correlation was still pretty high, but reached out to about four to five weeks now. And now the correlation has decreased substantially, meaning the large number of the cases that we detect today is not resulting in the same number of deaths, partially because you have younger people contracting it that are less likely to die. You have um, increased or better medical care now. You don't have ICUs that are completely full that cannot, that cannot um, uh, treat everyone that's coming into the ICU. So the number of deaths is slowly, slowly declining despite the, the number of climbs in terms of cases. Uh, the, the bad thing here is the fact that there's the lag is so long, it is hard to understand how this is going to affect the number of deaths going forward. Is it going to sharply increase? Is it going to be flat? Or is it going to actually continue to decrease? Is becoming harder to model. So that is one concern. But overall, you know, when we say that there's roughly 70,000 cases a day, um, well, uh, you know, that is a headline that is, um, is mostly due to increase in terms of testing and not necessarily uh, going to lead to a large number of deaths. So what we, what we did want to take a look at is a little bit on earnings here. So what, one of the things that we did look at is, uh, is the, um, uh, buyback suspensions and dividend cuts, where we're seeing that predominantly. So as you can see, the predominant sector in terms of buyback suspensions has been consumer discretionary, and the number one uh, dividend cutter has been consumer discretionary. So this is a, a bit of a warning sign for consumer discretionary at the moment. You do have financials and industrials also in this particular camp. So these are some of the sectors that we're paying attention to because we're seeing some strength here out of industrials lately and certainly consumer discretionary a lot of strength so this is one sector that we are going to be paying attention to going forward but the one thing that has been predominantly strong has been the number of beats to misses um, so we have about 73 percent of s p 500 stocks so far beat on earnings 84 percent beat on sales and 60 percent beat on both but so this is higher and or higher than average and this is certainly strong or, or a better look for this particular earnings season but one thing i did want to point out is that stocks that beat on earnings only saw about a 1% gain in terms of the stock price one day after earnings, but stock that missed had about a 3% decline. What that means is that if you're looking for beats, if you're looking for stocks that you think are gonna beat on earnings, you're less likely to see a big move to the upside. But if you're looking at a stock that you think is going to miss on earnings, you're much likely to see a stock that takes a big decline. But your chances of that happening are fairly low because as you can see, 73 to 84% of stocks are beating their earnings estimates. So rarely, relatively small percentages of stocks are missing, but the ones that miss are seeing some significant declines. Um, I did wanna point out some airline data because we've been talking about the increase in terms of leisure travel, but as you can see over the past few weeks as stock states, as we've seen that rise in terms of cases, as states continue to go roll back some of their restrictions, um, we are seeing a significant decline in terms of leisure travel. Corporate travel is still pretty much flat in terms of uh, almost no growth here, still roughly about 90% below uh, its norm. Uh, corporate uh, uh, leisure travel, roughly about a little over 60% decline, closer to 65% decline in terms of travel. But the one thing that was interesting to me was the route planning for most of the three major airlines. As you can see, Delta, United and American. American is looking at, American is the one that's been most aggressive in terms of adding routes back. They've, I wouldn't say thrown a Hail Mary here, but they're basically betting that they would be the first airline to be on board with a reopening and kind of taking advantage of the of the uh, increase back in terms of travel. Delta taking a much more conservative approach, still, still, um, 
removing a lot of their flights. United and American are competing for the top spot, but American taking kind of that Hail Mary. Uh, American is by far the worst in terms of the balance sheet out of the three legacy carriers. Delta is the, probably the best um, um, funded, if you will, at the moment, being the most conservative. Uh, that's, an, that's going to be interesting to see as far as how that's going to play out, if American's going to have the right strategy here and getting ahead of the game while Delta being more conservative. And then you have stocks like JetBlue, which is also seeing an, an increase. This is, again, um, it's JetBlue, Hawaiian, Allegiant. These are the three that are looking at declines versus you have Spirit, Alaska, and Southwest seeing some declines in terms of their expectations going out to September. So the airline industry taking a different approach, every a different, um, you know, domestic versus legacy carriers taking a different approach. And it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But so far, the trend not looking particularly strong in terms of that recovery. So airline stocks, uh, you know, unless we see this trend start to reverse higher, uh, not looking particularly good here at the moment. So some of the ideas we wanted to point you out here, silver. So we talked about gold, gold being a strong performer, but gold within just five, six percent from its all time high. But look at silver. Silver is starting to break out above this multi-year base here. It's formed this multi-year base in this $12 range. But as you can see, uh, you know, silver has a big move to the upside here, you know, just to the $20 level, which is the high back in 2016. You have some, some resistance here in the 22 and a half, 23 level. So this is the potential, this is the start of what could be potentially a much bigger run here in silver after breaking above that $17 level. Now, there is some divergence here, so be careful. My preference is always to wait for a bit of a pullback before you go for a long, being more conservative. That that is certainly going to allow you to get a much better risk reward because there is a lot of room to the upside here for silver versus gold, only about 5% from its all time high. High yield. Also, this is one that I've talked about on CNBC a while back, but you know, at the time we were looking at for this move from 80 to 84, it's now consolidated in the range for quite some time between that 80 to $84 range. And now it uh, looks like it's starting to peak above that 20 day moving, a 200 day moving average and that $84 level. So that could be again, the start of what could be a longer term uh, rally here. So with fixed income, um, when you're looking at flows into fixed income, this is one of the areas in the market that I like um, versus treasuries. A little bit more risk here, um, but when you see the Fed continuing to buy these assets and buying these ETFs, that's providing support for these markets to continue moving higher. And lastly, pharma. This is one that I've also talked about for quite some time. We recently retested that 136 level starting to move higher. This is purely based on vaccines. This is purely based on the optimism and the flow of funds into vaccines and vaccine research. Um, again, it's really difficult to try to bet on one specific company that's going to get there first or necessarily even. Um, we, very well, we very well may see multiple companies provide vaccines. So instead of trying to pick individual companies, my preference, again, as I've been saying for months, is to buy the whole ETF. Uh, you're likely going to see gains in this ETF and continued gains here. So this is the one that I like as far as playing this continue uh, growth, if you will, or continuation higher in this pharma space as um, all these companies try to seek a COVID-19 vaccine. So with that, those are my slides that I wanted to show you here today. I know I showed you a lot of slides here today, so I really hope that this was useful in helping you guys start your day. A very important day. We've got a fairly significant breakout here to the upside, so please pay attention to that, um, and I hope that this was helpful for you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great Tuesday.